Okay, people. So I have now finished the book of Boba Fett. And yo, I enjoyed the fuck out of it, yo. I enjoyed the fuck. I had no clue what this was going to be going in. I had no clue. And to be honest, that was kind of the same with the Mandalorian, right? I, I didn't know. And I think, you know, I've I've said it, I think probably in the Mando breakdowns, but I've never been the hugest Star Wars fan. Right. I now don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the original trilogy, especially Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back, boom, one of my favorites. Right. And I feel Rogue One is up there with Empire Strikes Back. And is the best of any of the new films. So the original Lucas trilogy, prequels even, were trash. <laughs> they were trash, right? Effects and all of that were decent. It was just the writing was horrible. Then we got these new ones, which, again, I didn't like. Didn't like, right? The first one was, you know... Highlander 3, I'm going back to that reference, so fuck you. Yeah, first one was Highlander 3. The others to Leia being able to breathe with no oxygen. Like, we had to see stupid shit all up in the films. It, it, it was horrible. I hated them. I mean, hate, eh, didn't hate, hate. I just didn't enjoy them. Now, a lot of people did. Whatever, awesome. But out of the new stuff, Rogue One, that was it. That was the gold fucking standard for me. But yeah, I, I never watched the Clone Wars cartoon or any of the cartoons or just, it just never really appealed to me, you know? I think maybe if the stuff had come out straight away after, you know, as a kid watching the original Star Wars, I'd have been in it more. And if I'd probably read the books and all of that, but at the time, those books were never available in audio form. Or if they were, it was usually an abridged, and I hate abridged. I don't touch abridged shit. You feel me? And there wasn't comicsology back then, so I wasn't able to read the comic book. So yeah, I, I was just, I've never had this huge pull for Star Wars. I've checked shit out. As time goes by, so when the Mandalorian, you know, I was a bit like, eh, I don't know, watched it, I wasn't loving it straight away, as the episodes went on, it grew on me, I enjoyed it, and because Gurgu, Gorgu, Goku, whatever the fuck that thing is called, was irritating, <laughs> I, I say it because you feel that sometimes these things seem to be created so you can have an action figure or a plush toy. So, I, but the writing was very good. Visually, it was incredible. And it grew on me. And I really enjoyed The Mandalorian. Season two killed it. But again, you know, Book of Boba Fett, right? We get the spoiler at the end of season two. Book of Boba Fett coming. It's just like, huh, okay. What the fuck is this? And, you know, back, 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 right? 2012, 2013, when, um, you know, the whole kind of thing was talking about, okay, we're going to do these Star Wars films, blah, blah, blah. They did talk about a Boba Fett. Right, the, the potential things they might do with the films, right? We knew we were going to get the trilogies, and in between these standalone films, and so it's just been like, huh, okay, a Boba Fett film, right? And you kind of thought, what are they going to do with that? What got kind of how are they going to run that? So it was interesting, but that it never happened. That never happened. I'm glad because I think. It's better sometimes to tell these stories as a show because you have more room to breathe, right? More room to breathe. So, yeah, we get this spoiler. Boba Fett is coming. So, 
it it dropped in um when did it drop uh begin no, end of December end of December and ran to early uh early February so now I finished it uh and yeah as I said look very much enjoyed it so John Favreau created it um hey it was good to have Ludwig um Goranasson back as the composer and I will tell you this right also Joseph Shirley composed stuff as well Ludwig did the theme and the theme I enjoyed the theme it was like boom ba 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 boom Bum, 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 bum. And I'm just like vibing with the theme. It was only when the uh, uh, the the last episode, right? And it, it's finished, and I'm just thinking about, yo, what did I think of this? Bum, bum, bum. That it then <laughs> clocked to me that the bum, bum. They are like Boba Fett. <laughs> bum, bum, Boba Fett. And I'm like. Oh, they've been saying his name in the song all this time. Just, yo, it gone over my head. It completely gone over my fucking head. Yo. <laughs> but no, I enjoyed the thing. Thing was solid, right? We had Favreau, Dave Fellini. Uh, Robert Rodriguez, Kathleen Kennedy, and Colin Wilson, executive producing. John Bartonicki as the producer. Um, Dean Cundy, David Clean, and Paul Hewan, cinematography. It's edited by Jeff Sabinik, Dylan Frischian, Andrew S. Eason, and Dana E. Glaberman, um, they edited it. Um, we like seven episodes, right? Seven episodes, about, I don't know, 40 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes an episode, right? So it's similar to The Mandalorian in that vein, right? Um, our cast, well, we had uh, Tamura Morrison back as Boba Fett. You know what I mean? Son of Django, right? Uh, we had Ming Na Wen back as Fennec Shand. Um, we also had uh, Matt Berry. Voicing 8D8, right? The uh, torture droid. Um, David Pasquezzi as uh, Mo no, um, Ma mm, Major Domo. As he's a, uh, I mean, his name, I think his name's Mox Chazes, right? Uh, he was the mayor of Mos Espa. Um, Jennifer Beals, she's Garza Whip. She's a Twi'lek who runs the sanctuary. Uh, -da Sophie Thatcher is trash. A mod, you know, she's part of the mods. Um, then Jordan Bulga is Shad. He's uh, another one of the mods. Yeah, there's about, I don't know, four or five mods. We don't really get the names of the others. Well, not in front of me anyway. We've also got uh, Stephen Root. He's up in there as Lawfer Peel. A watermonger. Um, Thundercats up in the joint, right? Thundercats in it, man, which was like, yo, okay. He's a mod artist. Um, 
do, 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 do. Amy Sedaris, she's back as Pelly Motto. Um, yeah, there's people up in here who I'm like, eh, I, I think people can, you know, wait for that. Wait for that. Um, Corey Burton, he's in it. Um, oh, and we have... There's a group, a lot of puppeteers. So Tamara Colson Woodard, Peter Clark, Dawn Dininger, Trevor Hensley, uh, Horishima Ilechichi, Mike Marzell, Jason Matthews, and John Rosengart. Right? They do a lot, all the puppetry and, and stuff like that. The gist of the show is this. The legendary bounty hunter Boba Fett navigates the underworld of the galaxy with mercenary Fennec Shand. When they return to the sand of Tatooine to stake their claim on the territory formerly ruled by the deceased crime lord Jabba the Hutt. Bum, bum, bum. And yeah, so that's it, man. That that that's the gist of the uh, of the show. And yeah, it was fun, yo. So it, it you know what I mean? Because look, so in the tr in the in the thing that we saw right at the end of second season of Mandalorian, it set up that we got Boba and Fennec, and they're in you know Boba's Boba's. Boba, Jabba, <laughs> Jabba, Jabba's uh, spot, right, so we, we know, he's, and we get, like, you know, he's the major domo now, right, so that's kind of what we knew coming in, so you understand that, but it's just like, all right, so what happened, how is this going about, and we know, listen, we've seen, once heads roll, there's that rush for power. So you know it, it can't be an easy transition. People are going to be gunning. And so we get to see all of this fallout, right? So, um, yeah, it is It's interesting. But we also get flashbacks, right? So we see Boba escaping from the Sarlacc, right, in which he kind of fell into in uh, Return of the Jedi. Was it Return? I feel it's Return of the Jedi, right? So, oh, this happens after Return of the Jedi, obviously, right? So we see all of this. We see the Jawas come after him the, and the, him getting captured by Tuscan Ray. So we get all of this backstory, and it's interesting, Right, because it lets you understand. Because remember, Boba's a bounty hunter. So why is a bounty hunter looking to become the new crime lord? Right now, there there has to be a change in mindset for something like that to uh, take place. You'd think. So all of these flashbacks, it it, it gives you that. Right, it it shows you these changes that have gone into Boba, right? Why he's thinking like this. And we, you know, we see how Fennec changed, right? We get to see all of these things and it is, it's very intriguing. I, I enjoyed it. I really did, you know, because it's like tonally, it's this different show. Right, it, it's very morose. <laughs> I mean, just look, Boba ain't, uh, he, he's not really a happy soul, <laughs> you know, what I mean? ain't particularly a happy soul. So, we get to see, you know, what I mean, just this whole change with Boba and everything, effects wise. <sighs> oh. Begs wise, this is pretty tight. It's pretty tight. There are a few occasions where you know things can look a little bit, but it's just like whatever, man. 
whatever, you know. And that's, I mean, some of the chases, right? So, and the chases in particular with the mods on their little scootery things. Some of those, you know, I mean, the crashes and things like that looked a little bit off. But apart from that, like, we had this great train scene, which was pretty fire, you know? The uh, the spaceship and just all of these things look incredible. Look incredible, man. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's, it's crazy. When you look at this production, it looks like it's, you know, that film level shit. Looks like it's that film level shit. It's fire, man. I loved it. It looks great. Tonally, the feel, just all of that, man. You're in it. You're in it. I haven't seen a lot of people online talking that, Ugh, yeah, it, it's not what we wanted. It's not what we expected. It's all over the place. It's just like, oh, dude, what you chill, right? And I imagine a lot of this is it's people that have been reading the books, the Dark Horse comics, right? So, you know, the story threads from all of that stuff, which... Most of it has been jettisoned, but I feel like Lucas, the Lucas Arts cats have kind of cherry picked the good stuff and are bringing it across. But sometimes I see something and I, I hit up one of my friends who I know he's in this shit, Dean. Right? I hit him up and be like, Dave, what's the deal with this character? He's like, Oh, yeah, that character was from the cartoons, or that character's from the Dark Horse comics, or you know what I mean? So you're like, oh, Okay. Okay, that's what's happening. But yeah, I, I think there's a lot of people that were like, oh, we want to see how they do this, which was shown in the comics. And it's just like, it's not going to happen. So chill, people. Now, there is complaint about the way the story shifts in episode five and six. And I will say, right. I did enjoy those episodes, but we do get a complete move away from the Boba story for, to some extent. You know what I mean? We do get that. So what we do see is very good, you know? And you feel it does then give you hints for season three of The Mandalorian. Right, if you paid attention <laughs> and listened to some of the things that were said, you can you could imagine. Okay, that is probably going to be a big thing in the Mandalorian. Right? There's there's this other stuff. There's this bit around emotions and Jedi, which I'm kind of like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> because a lot of the Jedi's we're seeing are emotional as fuck, right? Emotional as fuck. So to act like, yo, there's no emotions, you'd be like, hmm, <laughs> what are you talking about? Also, if you take something very large and you melt it down, how the fuck are you only getting a small vest? <laughs> It's, it's a bit like, all right, I get it. it, it's kind of cool, it's a bit like, um, you know, you remember in Lord of the Rings, and uh, Frodo gets the, uh, the armor, right, the, the undershirt, it, it's a bit like that, essentially, and you'd be like, yo, that thing should have given you more than that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Should have given... And as, as well, the package that we see my man holding, and then when it gets opened up and it's this armor, you're like, that shape you've been holding all this time, what the fuck was that then? <laughs> Is it doesn't equate to that. It definitely doesn't do that, right? But uh, yeah, no. We had a, a very cool new villain introduced who, again, my peoples tell me was in the Clone Wars cartoons. Very good, though. Very good. I Also, the cat that voiced him voices him here, which I that was a nice touch. But, yeah, very 
cool villain. Name wise, I don't know. You know what I mean? We got a DC character with a similar name, which I'm a bit like, ah, could have could have done better with the name, but very cool villain. And yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see if we see this villain again, you know. So we have that. Um yeah, it, it was it was a like because you know essentially like the Mandalorian is kind of a western a space western, a bit like Firefly, right? And this this definitely went deep in some of this western kind of mythology, right? Some of the scenes, how they were created, we get the standoffs and blah blah blah, right? Which, which was kind of fire. Also, though. We do get a kind of a Godfather-esque element, as in, you know what I mean? Old Bobes is now the um, major domo, and, you know, there's unrest in the other families, right? So it then becomes one of them stories too, which is just like, okay, how is this going to unfold, right? How is it going to unfold? It is very, very enjoyable. It's very enjoyable. I liked it. I liked it. Now, we get... So, I think mean, we get hints for Mandalorian Season 3. There's also a cut scene with the mod. And I couldn't really see a lot of it. I spoke to one of my people and he was he told me who he thinks we see. Which makes sense. Because... In the film, the way it's all done, you do feel, how is that character? You know what I mean? So I thought that was nice. I thought that was nice. I'm hoping <laughs> a, uh, a little won't be in. Like, because, I don't know. There, there's these conversations and stuff that we see. And I, I will say, right? We see we get the a CGI'd old character back. The voice is fucking weird. The voice is fucking weird. Doesn't sound like the character did at all, which does baffle me a little bit because I know there's a technology to do all that, and it's been like because you know it takes voice recordings, and so the more voice recordings you have, the better that would be. And you kind of think, well, there's three films worth of that voice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Plus cartoons and other spin-offs and blah, blah, blah. So it's just like, how is it the voice don't sound like the character? It was, it was weird. It was weird. Also, when you see the green one running around, he, he does look like he's got a soiled... A soiled nappy, a diaper for you motherfuckers on the other side of the pond, right? Does look like that. Like this motherfucker soiled himself. You know, it's it's weird. It's weird. And we do get we do it did feel like well, you know, with some of the things we see in this, that they they're there so we can create new toys. On that, like we get these weird kind of dog drones, which are building things, and just the, you know, I mean, the, the, these things. You've been like, mm, why are we getting this thing? Right? What's that? But I, but, but, with all these these little things aside, solid story. All right, we do get to see some other bounty hunters, which is very cool. And especially if you've been, you know, I, I've, I've read some of the Marvel Star Wars comic stuff. So we do get to see some of the bounty hunters from uh, from that we've seen on that, which was a, a nice touch. But yeah, it, it's very good. And, and it still it had a different feel from the Mandalorian, which is good. Right. So it's something that sits on its own. The way it ends. Yeah, I feel we're getting a season two. I think we're getting a season two. It might even 
give you a backdoor into that series was it knights of the old republic or something the one that uh the um oh the chick was meant to do right um who's i can't remember who the fuck who who, who is the chick man um remember uh, we, played by that girl the woman that got in trouble over some comments and which was all a bit ridiculous but there was meant to be that other spin-off show um yeah i can't remember what the fuck that show was meant to be called but i i kind of feel that um yeah maybe right maybe we could get that right which uh i i, I think would be interesting that would be interesting because, you know, we get to see a little thing and you're like, oh, does that mean? Could that possibly be? So there, there's some interesting things that have definitely uh, come out of this, you know, which uh, I am very much looking forward to. Very much looking forward to plus i will say as well some of the deaths are off screen so there are you know characters that could could potentially be back right i think so hmm who knows <laughs> who fucking knows? rangers of the new republic that was the other bit. I, I think yeah possibly i don't know man i don't know what i do know is all seven episodes of Boba Fett are now streaming on Disney Plus. So if you haven't seen it, people, go check it out. If you're a Star Wars fan, you'll definitely enjoy it. But I think if you haven't watched Star, I think you can enjoy this shit, right? The flashbacks give you enough info for you to be like, oh, okay, so blah 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 boom. So yeah, go check it out, people. It is definitely. It is definitely well worth it. And don't pay no mind to some of the dim-dims on uh, online. Because I think it's a lot stronger than people want to try and make out. But, you know, whatever your taste, people, whatever your taste, Book of Boba is there.